Hey everybody and thanks for stopping by the 360 Comics YouTube channel. This is our second video. If you checked out the first one, thanks for coming back. I appreciate the support. If you haven't, definitely go check that one out as well as the rest of our videos as we publish them. And uh, today we're going to be talking about my favorite comic book cover arts. There's so many out there, but I kept it just to my collection. I went through every book in my collection, pulled out my favorites, narrowed it down to a top 10 list for you, and I hope you enjoy. If you do enjoy, please hit that like button, subscribe, follow on Instagram, set up the notifications so that you're getting them by clicking the bell, letting you know when I'm posting videos and all that stuff. All right, so let's get down to it. Number 10 on our list right here, Batman 450. This is not a key issue or anything like that. It does have a Joker origin story in it, but I love the cover. It is Norm Brayfogel did the cover, and he did a bang-up job depicting this really, really interesting version of the Joker. You can see his face is completely blacked out with just his eyes and his mouth showing, and he's, he's not doing his normal smile. He's kind of like grimacing in pain, and his hand is clutched like this, and uh, you can see he's not having a very good time. He's living in this really dilapidated, um, run-down place. Everything's broken. Everything's dirty. There's newspapers everywhere that are all have um, stories, negative stories about the Joker. Um, so, you know, he's not in a great spot right here. It actually kind of reminds me a little bit of the, the Joker from the movie that came out a few years ago, how, you know, society is running him down and against him and he's, uh, you know, impoverished like this. So really great job on this Batman cover coming in at number nine. We've got X Factor number 24, an amazing Walt Simonson cover. First appearance as well of Archangel, who you can see coming right at you, kind of breaking that fourth wall here. Really great job by Walt Simonson. Really, like, awesome costume design on this character. I was never really a fan of Angel, but Archangel... Yeah, I, I really I really like the way he looks and everything. Um, the rest of the teams in the background, you can see them back there. And always thought this was a really cool cover. Um, definitely one of my favorites. Thanks, Walt Simonson. Next up, this is actually interesting. This is a, a book that's on the list that is a recent book. This is Batman 106 from the current run, released uh, June, I think, of 2021. This is a really awesome contrast that they used here. Um, this is Jorge Jimenez, I believe. Yeah, Jorge Jimenez doing great things right now um, in the comic industry. We got a yellow background, super cool. We've got the purple bat symbol, a lot of purple in here. You're going to see a ton of purple on the list because purple is my favorite color, and I think it looks great on the cover of comics. Um, in addition to, to that contrast, we have this whole thing going on in Batman's body right here uh, in his silhouette of you know a skyline of Gotham and Scarecrow looking exceptionally creepy hanging off the side of a tower uh, with his arm just dangling down. Really cool. It almost looks like a watercolor type painting, um, but darker. And I, I love it. As soon as I saw this on the on the shelf at the comic shop, I definitely needed to buy it. And uh, it's been really popular. I haven't actually seen it many places because it's sold out because of how awesome the cover, cover looks. And uh, it also is a first appearance of Miracle Molly. On to the next book, number seven. We've got Witches number five. This is probably the least well-known book on this list. Uh, it is an independent comic by Image Comics, and it was written and drawn by some pretty popular writer-artist combo thing going on here. We've got uh, written by Jock. Art by, sorry, Art by Jock, written by Scott Snyder. You may know those two having worked together on both Batman and the Batman Who Laughs and uh, Detective Comics, rather. Um, they did a phenomenal job at this series, and Jock's art is amazing. Cover art as well as interior art. This is my favorite out of uh, the six books from Volume 1. Um, 
you know, if you know anything about this story, you'll understand why these these trees, these like dendral plant things are, are surrounding this character, the main character Sailor there. If you haven't checked out this series, definitely worth it. I know it's available in a trade paperback as well. Great stuff if you're into horror. So that is number seven, which is number five by Jock. All right, next on our list, we're going to a very classic cover, a very classic occurrence, a fight between Wolverine and Sabretooth. Um, definitely a staple of, uh, of X-Men history and, and Wolverine history is uh, him battling Sabretooth. And Alan Davis knocked this one out of the park as far as the cover here. My favorite thing about it is from top to bottom, left to right, it's just the characters. There's no background here. Everything you see is just the characters. They're you know we're zoomed in super tight on uh, on their their brawl going on right now. And uh, another interesting tidbit about this comic: it's number two thirteen, and my birthday is two thirteen, February thirteenth. So I always pick this comic up if I can find it in good condition. And uh, you know, love to see a classic occurrence happening on the cover here and that's why it made the number six spot number five number five this is a very classic cover ripped so many times <laughs> get it ripped um, people swipe this cover all the time people pay homage to it this is amazing spider-man 238 this is the first appearance of hobgoblin and john romita jr and Senior worked on the cover together for this uh, as a team. It is Hobgoblin ripping Spider-Man's suit apart in half. Um, people have ripped this so many times and used it as um, you know a, a different character ripping some character's suit apart or even sometimes a character ripping another character apart. See if you can find those out there. Um, but really great art. Purple background, as I mentioned, I, I love purple. And uh, I think it's it's great use of, of the Hobgoblin character. Really like how you can't see his face at all. It's still a mystery because this is his first appearance. Um, but, uh, you know, kind of like the, the Joker in the first book. It's all, uh, all shadows. You just see these piercing orange eyes staring at you straight through the, the tear in the spider suit. Um, I also got the label up here, um, the, the custom label. Not only does it have this exact image right here but it also has some hands ripping apart the grade I thought that was really cool so uh, yeah, we got that I'd love to upgrade this to a 9.8 someday that's kind of one of my to-do list books but uh, we'll keep it a 9.0 for now anyway the next book number four we've got New Mutants 26 this is some fantastic Bill Sinkowitz art and I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I've always said it's Sinkowitz. I think that's how you pronounce it. But, hey, leave it in the comments below um, and let me know if, uh, if that's correct. Um, this art is really cool. This is the first appearance of Legion. And if you know anything about Legion, he's the son of Professor X. This cover really depicts his personality very well. We've got this, this photo of him that is you know calm and normal looking and then exploding out of this is all this power, all this rage, all this energy, and that depicts the character so well. Uh, there was a, a show a couple years ago, uh, Legion. I think it only lasted about two, maybe three seasons. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I definitely recommend checking it out if you have not. But, uh, you know, some people didn't like it. I liked it. Uh, great, great, great cover. And I love the orange in the back as well. All right, we're in our final three now. This next one is probably the most classic of all the covers on this list. This is Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man number one. He was given, you know, full range of this character, kind of get to do whatever he wanted to, uh, you know, in the early 90s due to his success drawing Spider-Man in the 80s. And he did a bang up job, especially with this cover. We've got Spider-Man in the squatting position, surrounded on all sides by this web and spiders crawling everywhere. And I think I, I think I heard somewhere that this, the number of spiders is relevant to something. 
Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, but uh, if you know, leave it in the comments below. Let me know, um, you know, how many spiders there are and why. Um, but, oh, man, I love this. This was actually the first comic book I ever owned. My dad's friend gave it to me as a gift, and I've kept it all these years. I will never get rid of it. Um, you know, Todd McFarlane did a lot for the industry, especially in the 90s when things were uh, not looking so great. And uh, yeah, this is uh, a great tribute to him. Another cover that's been homaged many times. All right, we're down to number two. My second favorite cover of all time in my collection is Detective Comics 608. This is uh, a key issue again, the first appearance of Anarchy. And purple background, like I've said, I love purple. But even more than that, even more than the purple background, I love the vantage point we're seeing here. We're at like street level, kind of even like crouched down maybe or laying down on the sidewalk, looking up. At this situation and up top here we've got Batman down at the bottom here we've got anarchy and on the side of the building overlapping each other we have the bat signal and the anarchy symbol and I think that this all comes together as such a cool cover I could probably go on for 10 minutes alone about this cover and all the things I like about it from the graffiti and things to, to you know the angles of everything and the moon behind Batman but I've got to got to move on to the last one. Before I do, please remember, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I much appreciate your support. It means a lot to me and it'll keep this thing going. On to number 1. My favorite comic book art of all time. This was also my first graded comic that I ever owned. This is the Uncanny X-Men number 251 and not a key issue or anything. But man, Mark Silvestri did the most amazing job on this cover. He has Wolverine crucified up on an X. Really cool idea given it's an X-Men book. And all these skulls beneath. And of course, the purple background, my favorite thing. And uh, looks awesome. Looks so cool. Um, you know, Wolverine, such a cool character, especially during this Claremont run. And, you know, Mark Silvestri did a great job on this cover really find no flaws with it everything I, I like how the the x actually overlaps the x in x-men and uh big fan big fan like i said the first graded book i ever owned uh probably i don't even know how many years ago but i walked into my local comic shop this was up on the wall and i was like oh i have a couple copies of that book i love it it's a graded one it's a nine eight i might as well pick it up so i did anyway I hope you like this list. Um, I really, really had a fun time going through all my comics and, and, and pulling them out and kind of seeing what I had. Um, and I hope that, uh, that you found some comics that you maybe weren't aware of. Definitely leave in the comments if you have any that you like. Uh, I'd love to see more. I'd love to check them out. And uh, until next time, remember, turn the page, wash your hands.